Hi everybody. All right, I'd like to get started today and kind of review what we've been going over for the past couple of weeks and that is involving our heart blocks. So when we talk about heart blocks, we're talking about relationships between the atria and then also in the ventricle and what, what kind of conversation goes on between those two areas of the heart. We know that that AV and then that bundle of hiss are right there at that connection point. So that's where we're going to focus our attention is the PR interval. We all know that the PR interval is supposed to be less than 0.20 and in cases where we're dealing with a heart block we have something that is occurring here that's making that different. So if you come over here and look at this first one and you find one that marches out, this one does a pretty good job of marching out, right there's the initiative and then there's the, the end of the PR interval. So if you look at that, here's one big block and we have extended well past that big block there. So as a result, you're looking at it, it, an increase in the PR interval. So it's greater than 0.20. Now we're going to look at the rest of the strip. We know that we've got the rate of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we know that there's a heart rate of eight, uh, excuse me, 70. And when we look at this, uh, we have QRS that's narrow. We have a P wave in front of each and every one. We have a T wave behind it. So we know that the SA node is in charge because we, we are creating that SA, that, S, that P wave, that SA node is firing to create the P wave. So the only issue that we have is that the PR interval is greater than 0.20. That means that this one is a sinus rhythm at a heart rate of 70 with a first degree heart block. So that is going to be our answer to the first one. Now when we look at the second one here, this one is a little bit different. If you look at this, let's start with what we know. So we go with the rate. There's three, four, five, six, seven, and we don't have quite enough to add another one in. So we were going to say that the heart rate on this one is also 70. But if you compare that to the one above, there's a big difference because you've got group beatings here. You've got a whole section of them that are running separate from the rest of the strip. And if we took this and we extended this out, you could probably have the continuation on this way. So when we're looking at this, we're going to, to do a comparison. We know we've got group beatings. That's indicative of an issue. So we're going to look. We've already counted our key waves. We're going to look for the P waves. Well, we have one here. You have another one here, here, and then you also have this one right here that's unconducted and it's not going anywhere. There's nothing behind it. So what we're going to do is we know that we have a problem at the junction. So we know that there's an issue over here in this region. So now we just have to identify it. And we're going to identify that by looking at that PR interval again. So we're looking at the PR interval. We see here, sorry, let me get that off there. We're looking at the PR interval and if you compare this PR interval to this PR interval to this PR interval, you can see that they gradually get wider and wider before they drop a beat. This is called a second degree type one heart block, or sometimes it'll be referred to as an AV block. But this is this is that. Uh, that continuation or that extension and it means that the condition has gotten worse and a lot of times when we talk about the second degree type 1 AV blocks we, we identify those uh, with the husband and wife and we talk about the wife being the P wave and then the QRS complex is the husband so what's going on here is, is the husband comes home on time here we have him he comes home on time but then what happens the next day? He stays out with his buddies and he doesn't come home quite like he's supposed to. And then the next night he stays out with his buddies and he's been drinking so he's even later. And then the next night he knows that he's going to be um, sleeping on the couch. So he just doesn't even bother coming home because he knows that the wife is going to be upset. So you've got the P, QRS, everything's lining out 
until you get to here. So that's a second degree type one. In the third picture, we have a different condition. And it's all about, again, we're looking at that PR interval. It's all about how that PR interval interacts with the environment. So we're looking at this and we go, okay, well, let's just do what we know. We got a heart rate of 40, so we know that. And when you look at that, you're like, okay, well, I found a QRS wave. This matches, this looks right, it's narrow. Here's my P wave. Hmm, that's a little extended, but we need to look at the whole strip. You come out here and you got your T wave, but then you've got this that's after it. And if you look, it's consistent every time, right? Everybody see that happens more than over and over. So you have to identify that, that complex here. And when you look at this complex, it actually looks very similar to the P waves. So that means that this is also a P wave. So we have every other beat is a P wave that has no QRS behind it. There's no QRS behind it. So we can't just call this a first degree heart block. It's not a first degree heart block. We have extra P waves that takes it out of the first degree heart block and puts it into a second, and second or a third, and we've got to figure out how bad it is. So a lot of people get confused and misconstrued, and I'll point it out to you again here in a minute. But what you're looking for with the second degree type two is that when the P, when the, excuse me, when the PR interval does work with the QRS, excuse me, when those do interact with each other, they are consistent. So if you look at the distance here on the PR interval here, it is consistent with the PR interval here and here and here. So the PR interval is consistent. So in a second degree type two, the PR interval is consistent. So you have extra P's, but when the P does interact, it is consistent. That's what makes it a second degree type two. So we talk about the husband and wife the husband comes home on time, but in this case, he's getting paid every other day, which would be really nice. But he's getting paid every other day. Well, when he gets his paycheck, he goes out and he spends it at the bar. He spends all the cash. So now, not only is the husband um, interfering with the relationship, but he's also interfering with the money. So, and we all know that money tends to be one of those things that, that kills relationships and causes divorces. And that's where we come into this final one. If you look at this final one, you say, okay, well, fine, what we recognize, there's one, two, three, so you have three QRS complexes, so we're gonna make that a heart rate of 30. We have a heart rate of 30, and you've got P waves. So you come here, you find one you recognize, we're gonna come back, okay, so this is our P wave. And you're like, all right, good to go, there's the T. And then you're like, wait a minute, there's a P wave, there's a P wave, and there's a P wave. And you're like, huh, well, is it a second degree type two? No, it is not. And the reason why it's not is because the PR interval is not consistent. Check out the length of the PR interval here and compare it to the, excuse me, the length of the PR interval here and here. They don't get narrower. So these are completely um, out of character. And the other thing you can do too and commonly is what's referred to as P's and Q's go marching through. With no relation between the two. So what we're saying here is this husband and wife have divorced. So the atrias because remember that's the wife. She is in doing her thing in her life. There is a blockage here between the atria and the ventricle. And remember that ventricle is our husband. The ventricle is the husband. The husband has, is not consistent with the wife. They've divorced. There is no communication going on between them anymore. This is referred to as a third degree heart block. So that's the difference between each one. I hope this kind of helps put it in perspective. 
And if you have any other questions, please write them down and we'll go over them in class. Talk to you soon.